praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's bow down our heads to I pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord and our Father, we worship your majesty. We thank you for the privilege given unto us to be in your presence this time around. That you accept our thanks, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you for your grace upon our life. We thank you for the opportunity given unto us to witness today's family service. That you accept our thanks, O Lord, in Jesus' name. That you as want to listen to your word, that you speak to us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. As your word will be coming out, that I pray that the authority in your word will meet us at the point of our need, O Lord, in Jesus' name. At the end of today's service, you give us a good turn around, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, because we've answered in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to bless the name of the Lord for this uh, month's family week. Also for what the Lord has been doing in our lives since the beginning of this month, which is the month of turnaround. And all the areas that our lives have been turned around shall remain permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. And all other areas also shall be touched in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis where we have our Bible reading for today's service. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. Genesis 22 verse 1. Now the Lord God made man through to 27. And Jared lived an hundred sixty and two years, and he begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch eight hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were nine hundred Sixty and two years, and he died. Jared is still one. Oh God, you are doing all the Oh, see, be no cool. Jared is still one. Egg berry, egg berry, you are doing. Let him be at your be no cool. Oh, see, be a more cool. At your more berry. But boy, you are Jared is still there. Egg berry, you are doing. Oh, the magic, the Oh, see, cool. And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years, and he begat sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch could see when you got out, do all the maroon, or see be made to sell her. Enoch could see Bologna, knee or do or do lay it, or be made to sell her, or see be a more corny at your more bearing. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And Methuselah lived an hundred eighty and seventy years, and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech seven hundred eighty and two years, and begat sons and daughters. And Enoch could see by Lorunri, own cosy see, Nitori see a Lorun moon law, Metusela see one knee, or go so do, or lay me jay, or see be lameki, Metusela see one knee, egg bearing or do, or demaged the logun, lay it by so be lameki, or see be a mockery at your mobbering. In all the days of Metusela were nine hundred sixty and nine years, and he died. Bob Boy Joe, Metusela see jay, egg bearing or do, or demon, the logbon. Osiku, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic the Lord gave to me this morning is walking with God. Walking with God. As a person, because we are in the month of turnaround. If for me, I would have chosen another topic that goes along with turn around. Because I 
But this is the mind of God this morning. It's one of these my precious sisters that Lord used for me in the revelation to give me this topic. He said, Mommy, God has a message for us. I said, What is it? He said, Walking with God like Enoch. I said, Is it for me? Personally, is the message for me? Personally, or is it for you as a person? Or is it general? That's how I asked in that revelation. And she told me it's general. That's how I woke up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So as I said, I will have chosen another topic entirely that needs to do with turn around. But when he continued to explain the topic to me, I was made to know that the best turn around we can ever have in our lives is to work with God. Whatever areas of our life, physical or secular, marital, financial, material, or other areas of our life that our lives turn around, if we do not work with God, all is in vain. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's why we want to examine this message. Walking with God. We have read the account of Enoch that he walked with God for good 300 years. There are some that have lived before him that were even more aged than he was. And also after him, even the very son himself begot, lived 969 years. The man that lived longer, the man that ever lived longer in life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But yet, we could not reach any other account that is so precious from his life, except that he lived 669 years without working with God. So what does that amount to? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How old are you, sas? How old are you, mas? And how old am I? You were told that when this man, Enoch, was 65 years, he told that when it was then we could say he gave his life to Jesus. After he begot Methuselah. He gave his life to Jesus. And after that, he lived another 300 years working, serving God. You can be asking questions in our heart. Why are they living so long in the olden days? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And these days, that is not like that. If you see a hundred old man, thank God for our papa here. 
See, he's still looking fresh. Because the Lord is renewing his days. The Lord is renewing his days. He's renewing his body. Compare him with another, even let's say 80 year old. Another person that may not be working with God. See how they will look. They will look haggard. Even many cannot even work again. Many will be paralyzed. Many things will have happened to many of them. Even I had a case. Of mother. It's not only I heard, but I know her very, very well because it's a close relation. Before she died, she could not walk again. She could not bath again. Even for her to eat, she will need to support her. Even parts of the body are already going. On bed. Before she died. And asked me how old was she. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What am I saying? Why are we not living longer years like the days of old? I tried to read some comments on this area because the question also came to me that why, why, why? I went through some commentaries. He says in their own time, there had not been rain. Rain, rain, rain. Said, rain has not been falling. Some other things have not been happening. There has not been so much environmental pollution. And there are times there is no ill health intakes. I want to get I want to to I want to go to the I want to I want I want to the Many things that we are eating is giving our body disturbances, and that is why we are getting older. But those that work, that are working with God, even in this age, we see that God is still renewing them. He's still renewing their strength. Though they may not be able to live like the people of old. But yet, God is still renewing their bodies. I asked a question the other time. That how old are you, sir? How old are you, ma? And how old am I? Since when have we given our lives to Jesus? Since when? What was our age when we give our lives to Jesus? And how old are we now? How many years do we even think we can still spend on health? Let's live the remaining years we are going to spend apart because we do not know. Nobody knows. It may be longer than you expect, and it may not be as long as you expect. But as you are right now, as I am right now, am I working with God? Am I working with God? Enoch was the second person to work with God after the fall of man. He lived in the dispensation of conscience. He of conscience. He lived in the dispensation of conscience. He lived in the dispensation of in the dispensation of the dispensation of conscience. He since I know yet abandoned like this, yes, you are right. But at the same time, in their time as well, as the Bible recalls in the book of Jude, we are going to see later, 14 to 15, that he lived in, this, in the generation, in a perverse and ungodly generation. 
bo tile je wi pe a le ma ro lokan wi pe aye ti won gbe ni akoko na igba ti won ati akoko ti won ko buru ja ibi iru akoko ti a wa yi sugbon bibe li fi ese re mule ni bi ta sun lo ka ninu we juju wi pe akoko ti awon na gbe o je akoko ewu sugbon sibe o ba olorun rin truly this our own generation is more wicked than this but the grace the Lord has given to us in this generation is more than the one they had in their own time because the Bible says as sin is abandoned the grace of God is much more abandoned what is the grace we are receiving in our time that is more than this in their time they do not have Bible I mean the time of Enoch, this man we are reading about that worked with God. No Bible. Holy Spirit has not come. No teachers. No pastors. There will guide them. In that dispensation, in the dispensation of the uh, conscience that this they live according to the dictation of their conscience. So we have more grace in our own time than his own time. Yet he worked with God. When we are saying working with God, what king with God, what does it mean? Does it mean to be coming to church every Sunday? Does it mean to be carrying Bible and go for evangelism? Does it mean that ah, since the years I've given my life to Jesus, I've never missed service any day? As you see me, I'm a pastor, I'm a worker, I'm gifted. I have different kinds of gifts. I've been performing signs and wonders. The Lord has been using me to wrote different miracles. I'm, I'm very fervent in the house of God. I'm full full of religious activities. Is that the meaning of working with God? No. We do not read that account. We do not read that in the case of the man of God, Enoch, we are talking about. I called him a man of God because he was godly. I call him a man of God because the Bible confirms that he's a prophet. Because he prophesied to the people of his own generation. He preached righteousness to the people of his own generation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say, what does it mean to walk with God? Walking with God means living a concern consistent life with God's will as well as experiencing fellowship with him. It also means pleasing God in all our ways. It means doing things after the mind of God. It means having the mind of Christ. It means saying, doing things as Christ himself would do or say it. From that simple definition, am I working with God? Are you working with God? Are you doing things that Jesus will do? Are they being still on hell? Are you obedient to the word of God? Am I in his will? Am I having his mind? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Please do not sleep now. Or what we are saying does not concern you. You just want to turn around on every area of your life. You want to be blessed. You want to have money. You want to have wife. As, as a bachelor's 
You want to have a husband as spinsters. In your education as students, just want to make it. As a business man or woman, you want it to be prospering, you want your business to be booming, that's all what you want. You just want to turn around on your physical areas of life. Is that the reason you are sleeping because what you are saying does not concern you? You don't want to work with God. You have forgotten what the Bible says. What shall you profit a man? What will you profit me? What will it profit you? Even if you gain the whole world, if I gain the whole world, if I have turned around on every area of my life, and yet I'm not working with God I'm not pleasing God I'm not doing his will and I hope to go and dwell with him at last how possible will that be that is impossibility so I beseech you please for God's sake and for your own goodness sake do not sleep now and the Lord will bless us together in Jesus name working with God am I working with God I said the other time working with God does not mean because you come to church service regularly working with God does not mean you always give each a man for church projects Working with God does not mean you are full of religious activities in the church of God. People know me and they know you. That's not working with God. All these things I've mentioned, they are working for God. There's a difference between working with God and working for God. Many people we have mistakenly taken working for God for working with God. You can be working for God and not working with God. But there is no way you will be working with God that you will not work for God. I want us to get that one right. So that you are not mistaking them for each other. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. If I say I'm working with God, does my life agree with God? Because the Bible says in the book of Amos 3.3, Amos 3.3, it says can two work together, can two work together, except they be agreed can I, can I say I'm working with God without being in agreement with God without being in agreement with his word without being in agreement with his way without being in agreement with his will can I walk without being in agreement with God. As married people here, when you first met your spouse, you had an encounter with him or her. You, you had an encounter praise the Lord Hallelujah. you had an encounter you met together you know yourself before you now come together working together as husband and wife you have agreed that I want to marry you I want to go along with you I want to share your vision I want to be in your goal. I want to have part in your achievements. I want us to become one. And the Bible has said that both husband and wife, when you are married together, they become how many? They become one. That means you want to, your agreement to be one. You want your reasoning to be one. You want your vision goal 
everything to be one. That means you are in agreement with that your spouse. That's why you are able to work together so far. I have my fathers and mothers there that they are wearing already 50. Many, maybe 60, 70, upward. Why is it possible for you to have lived so long with that man, with that woman? For so long, for so long years. Is it not because of agreement? Is it not because you are ready to continue to, to go together? Is it not because you are ready to comply with each other? The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. What am I saying? Are you or I in agreement with God we say we are serving? the will of God made known to us the word of God made known to us his way that has been made known to us have I agreed to walk in that way have I agreed to do that particular will um, have I agreed with him to do according to his word as I've had? Let's check our lives this morning. Because if there is any time to work with God, if there is any better time to work with God, this is the right time. If there is any other time to be in agreement with God, if there is any time, if there is any better day or time to be in agreement with God, to work with Him more than ever before, to be in agreement with Him in every area of our lives than ever before, I say this is the right time. Because you know what is happening here and there. You can testify. You can testify. You are hearing on radio. You are viewing on television. You are reading on newspapers. You are listening to headline news. Even with your naked eyes, you are witnessing. What is happening here and there? Telling us we are in the age, uh, the, 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 we are in the end of the age. So since the time I say I'll give my life to Jesus. How is my work within. How is my work within? Christianity is about a relationship. Christianity is about a relationship. It's not just to bear the name, to be a Christian name. It's not just to be coming to church regularly. But it's about a relationship. Relationship with who? Is it with Baba Omolewa? That's what many people have been claiming in all these days. I've been working with Baba Omolewa for 20 years now. I've known him for 30 years now. Even we, 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 we did an, an tender age together. We are the same youth. We are, we are in the same group. When he was at this church, at that church. If I working with Baba Malewa, have you ever at any time worked with God? Do you have relationship with God? Remember, Baba Malewa is not your God. Don't make him your God. He also is working with that God. Thank God for his life. Are you is not working with God since the time he has given his life to Jesus? Do you think we'll be under this umbrella now? If he's not doing the will of God, if he's not working according to the word of God, if he's not working the way of God, he's not living the kind of life God expects him to live. I'm very sure you wouldn't have been here by now. You'll have been another. You will have been in another another church or denomination. 
But for you to be present here today, it may not be possible because he's the one that God has given this vision. He's the one God has given this ministry. If he's not working with God, having a relationship with God, if he's not hearing the voice of God, why will I come to him and say, Baba, please, what is God saying concerning me? How will you come to him and say, Baba, please pray for him? What I'm passing through, I don't even know what to do. I'm fed up. I don't know what to do. Why do we always kill every Sunday, every program day, every Thursday? People will jump back here because they want to see Baba. If he is not working with God, 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 if he is not working the way of God, if he is not doing the will of God, if he is not living his life according to the word of God, who would you have come to meet? Who would you have come to meet? When last have we heard the voice of God? That's a question we need to answer in our hearts. As a father to children in the house, as a husband to wife, wife to husband, do you do in a day that will not talk to your children? If I thought they are not living with you, maybe they are in school, they are on campus. Don't you call them? How much more when they are living under your umbrella? You see them every day. Don't you communicate each day? As husband and wife, except your husband is another location. Or your wife is another location. That you may not talk to him in a day. And I, I hardly see where love is existing between husband and wife. No matter how far you are living to your husband, to your wife, that you not talk to him in a day. Where, where there is peace where there is love where there is unity where they are in one accord if at all you are living abroad we will give you a call maybe it's his or a call that will wake you very early in the morning because you are having relationship together and it's not in the absence of communication. So why is, is it not happening like that with God? If truly we have relationship with him. If truly we are working with him. I ask the other time. Personally. To you. To your family. To me. See me. To my family, See, I be me. what has God said this morning? I'm not saying what you have heard in Sunday school. I'm not saying what you are hearing now. It's still the word of God coming to us generally, even including me. I'm just his mouthpiece. I also have been checking my last since I received this message. Am I even working with him? Am I even working with him? What's my relationship with him? If my relationship with him has not broken, so check your life. Life too. What has he told you this morning? If you're, you are having, you are if, are you. if you're having a relationship with him, if truly you are working with him, if truly you are in unity with him, if unity you are truly we are working in his way. Working with God. Working with God. This must be our ultimate search. If we have not been doing that before, this is the time we need to seek his relationship with us. When you are working with him, you will have absolute trust in him. You will have absolute faith in him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even when you are passing through trials, you will not forsake him. Oh, Nikojare. 
you will not forsake him. Oh, ni ko sile. You know because of that and say I'm not going to church again. Oh, ni ti tori nkan ti o nla koja ko wa so pe mi o lo sile jo si mo ja re. I'm fed up I cannot pray again since all these years. Oh, ti e ti sumi mi o ni gbadura mo lati bi odun yi wa. Do you because of misunderstanding forsake your wife or husband? In je wa ti tori ede aye ede ko ko re sile tabi aye are bi. Do you because of disobedience even into the disobedience of your children reject them and say you are not they are no longer your children in je wa ti tori pe awon omo re se lodi se o se igboron se o ba ko won sile gege bi omo no ori be and babu says if we that are wicked who man be that are wicked in nature if we can do that bi be li wa so pe ti awon iran ti o buru bayi so ba le se leyi how much more god melo melo ni olorun walking with god bi ba olorun rin Walking with God. In holy life. Walking with God. The righteous life. In open and private places. We know Baba Molewa will see you. We know your Sunday school teacher will see you. We know your father and mother cannot see you. We know your husband or wife cannot see you. How holy are you? And you know that somebody is seeing you. Somebody is looking at you. Even in that your privacy. Even in that place you are that nobody that can challenge you is. God is there. If truly you are working with him. That consciousness will come to you when you want to do something bad. That's Though Baba Molewa is not here, anybody that can challenge me is not here. I want to let me know. Go let me be. But the one I'm working with is here. Though I cannot see, but he sees me. So I cannot do such great wickedness like the case of Joseph. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Working with God. Am I working with God? How years? Have, how many years have we been working with God now? Are you remember the year you are giving your life to Jesus? The Bible says, "Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed." Now is our hand is imminent than when we first believed. So there's no way we can live like Enoch. I mean in years he lived. But who knows the many years I'm going to spend? Who knows the many years you are going to spend? I think somebody wants to raise this head and up. Nobody. Nobody. So we need to determine this morning. That the many days of my life. That the many years of my life. I want to work with God. Since time Enoch has given his life to God. Since the time Enoch has given his life to God. Bible says for the remaining 300 years of his life he worked with God. He did not backslide or compromise. Even he was preaching to people of his time. Let us read Jude. Jude before Revelation. Jude wa ka to lo sinu we fi han. Verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 and 15. Jude. It has only one chapter. Jude. Verses 14 and 15. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of this saying. Behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches 
which ungodly sinners have spoken against. He prophesied to the people of his own generation. He warned them about the day of the Lord. That the day of the Lord is coming. To give judgment to as many as will be ungodly. Let's see Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. Verse 5. <inaudible> Hebrews 11, 5. <inaudible> By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He was caught up. He experienced rapture in his own time. He did not die. He did not die like other mortal men. He just disappeared. How many of us are looking, waiting, expecting rapture here? It's only me. It's only me. Ah, as I'm not seeing us raising up our hand. We are expecting rapture. That we will not see death. That will be our portion in Jesus' name. But mind you, death can come today before rapture. But what account will I have? What account will you have? Is it that you please God before you die? Is it that you please God before, is it that I please God before I die? Enoch walked with God and he was raptured. But before his, his translation, before he was raptured, before his appearance, there was testimony about him. People around him could testify that truly this person is working with God. God himself could testify that he pleased him. Can people in our community testify about our living? Is it not only they can say, ah, we know she used to go to church every day. She goes to church. But truly we know he goes to church. Even very early, he carries Bible and go for a, a money cry. Even from bus to bus, he preaches. Is that the only account they can give about us? What about our lives? What about our lives? Daily life, as we have heard in Sunday school. How, how about it? Are we pleasing God? And God, if as I'm speaking now, as I'm speaking now, can God give account of me that I'm pleasing Him? Standing before people preaching, teaching, singing, writing signs and wonders does not mean we are pleasing God. People may look at me and say, this sister must be pleasing God. They may be hailing me. 
They may be giving me good recommendations. But can God say that concerning me? Is that God's recommendation? That's why as many as are working for God and are not working with God, they will be surprised that at last they will find themselves in hell. They will find themselves in hell. Great men of God are in hell already. Great men of God that we know that have passed on. Many of them have found themselves biting their finger, wearing a gnashing teeth in hell already. You're asking me, how do I know that have I been there? Maybe I will need to tell God to take you there. So you go and see them there. Well, and you come back and make amendments. You are waiting till you see them in hell before you believe. See the grace with which God is dealing with us these days. That's another grace that was not in the time of Enoch. These last days, because God will not be condemned over anybody. He's taking people to hell. He's taking people to, to heaven. Showing them how the place is. Maybe you are one of those that do not believe. Now, that maybe they are faking it. Maybe they are faking it. Maybe it's a lie. When you get there, you will believe. But it's my prayer that I will not go there. It's my prayer that you on that in this church, everyone will be hearing the undiluted true word of God here. We shall not go there in Jesus' name. Then we need to we need to work with God by doing all the word of God we are hearing here so that we will not go there. Let's rise up on our feet. We want to go and pray. Our Father, we thank you for the word of God. Our Father, we thank you for the word of you want to go and taste it before you come back and pray? You know the only reason why I say I'm not even praying for it, but I'm just saying, if I thought God shows me hell, because those people that especially I want to allow to taste here, some people that God took to heaven so that they would taste what is what is happening to people in the hellfire before you now with mercy bring Men them back. Know Pastor Moses Ezekiel. How many of us know or we have heard about Pastor Ezekiel? Let us raise up our hands. Ah, you know him. Ah, you know how ah, God is in there. If he did not come for the situation, if he's telling people concerning what he saw in the hell, life torment. He normally experience life torment. As he's preaching, he will find himself in hell. As, As if he's in hell. Mama Jakoro Ikuni. He will be tormented. His body will be hot like fire. People will be pouring water, pouring water on him. He will be foaming. Foam will be coming out of his mouth. Before he will regain his consciousness back to life. And not only him. Another boy, maybe you've heard about him. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. A boy of 14 year old. You should have listened to me. A boy of 14 years old. God is taking him to hell. To go and taste all the sections of hell. I was watching it here yesterday. I was shedding tears. He said also he's now experiencing it like Baba Moses. Like like uh, um, Moses Ezekiel. He said, God said, it's either you choose 
that when, whenever you want to minister to tell people about it, you'll be experiencing this, or at last when you die, you leave this world, you go back to hell finally in that eternity. Oh this one. Then he chose to be having life torment experience of hell to go to hell at last because he knew what he has tasted. Let's close our eyes and talk to the Lord. Are you walking with God? It's only those that walk with God. Mind you, I clarified it. I'm not saying walking, walking for God. But only those that walk with God are the one that will see God at last. Maybe their heads are blown off by Boko Haram, unexpectedly. Maybe bomb blow off their head. And they die. If they have walked with God before that happens, they will see God at last. If it is true kidnappers, if they have walked with God before that time, and God allows it like that because he's saving people from kidnappers. But if God allows it, they will see heaven because they have walked with him before, before they were kidnapped. Close your eyes and let us pray. What are you to tell God? For this message you have had this morning. Are you working with God? He not also was a woman be like me, like you. Enoch was a, ma a human being like me and like you. He lived in an ungodly generation. Generation where they did not know God. He preached to them. As he's doing his service, working for God, he was still working with God. He, he had the mind of God. He lived a blameless life. That he, this testimony could be given about him that he pleased God. God, help me for the many days of my life, for the many years of my life. Children, won't you pray? Students, you just open your eyes and you're looking at them. You don't pray. There are many age, your age in hell. Even those who are not old, are not old as you are, they are in hell. According to the revelation we have been given, so won't you pray and give your life to Jesus? That for the remaining years of your life you will spend, that you may be able to walk with God, to know God and do His will, so that you not find yourself in hell like other boys and girls that are already in hell. God, God, the grace I need, the grace I need, the power that I need to work with you, to do your will, to please you, to walk in your way, to obey all your commandments, to live a holy life. Before I leave this world, either by rapture or by death, Lord, give to me this morning. I want to walk with you. I want to walk with you. I want to please you. I don't want to be working for God. I do not know. Do you think you are pleasing God because of your prosperity? Because God is blessing you. Because God is answering your prayers, He's just having mercy. He's just having mercy. He can be blessing you. He can be increasing you. He can be turning your life around physically. Yes, you may not be pleasing Him. Tell Him this morning. Give me the grace. I want to walk with you. I want to please you. 
I want to do according to your will. Let your grave be sufficient for me. Where will you spend eternity? In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Lord, our God, we thank you for this wonderful message we have heard. We thank you, King of Glory, for reminding us again that it is not just enough for, you, for us to work for you, but to work with you. That it's not just enough to be coming to church, but in all our ways, we have to please you. Father King of glory, we are asking for the grace to please you in all our ways. Father, give unto us in the name of Jesus. The word of God says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That what can we give in exchange for our souls? What will it profit us to have everything on earth? We have houses, uh, cars, everything, but eventually such a person ends in hell fire. King of glory, we are asking you for that grace, that power, the enablement to serve you, to please you in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, so that eventually on that glorious morning we will reign with you. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Mighty Father, King of glory, we thank you again because on this mountain, we hear a lot of the truth. You are telling us the truth on a daily basis. Mighty Father, King of glory, we want to be making use of this truth. Father, King of glory, because it is not the truth that we know, that we set us free, but the truth we know and we do. That is what we set us free. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Mighty Father, King of glory, we now thank you, Lord, concerning your, our mommy that you have used. Father, King of glory, that, Lord, you give, him more, give her more anointing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Virtues have gone out of her. Father, refill her back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mighty Father, all we are asking, Lord, is that for eventual you come right now. Help us to make it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, most wonderful Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we take our seat, I want us to ask ourselves, am I working with God or am I working for God? If you are working for God and you are not working with Him, there is no hope of eternity with Him. So that is why we will, we will examine yourself now. Lord, search me. Look at my ways. Look at my heart. Uh, am I working with you? Or I'm working for you. That is why you need to pray more now. Just tell him to search you. Search me, O Lord. What's my position with you? Pray. The message is an eternal one. Message of life. If you are working with God, you have nothing to fear. Either rapture takes place or death comes. 
your children wherever they may be. You will be rest assured that they will be saved from the hand of kidnappers, from the hand of ritual killers. Ritual killers. So pray very well. 